Jesus is teaching his disciples in parables and he likens the kingdom to a man searching for precious pearls and finding one pearl of infinite value, a priceless pearl. He sells everything that he has in order to possess it. Notice that he sells all that he had. That means everything. So unique was that pearl, so valuable a treasure, so unlike anything else on earth, that that man sells everything he has in order to buy it. I want you to really think about that this morning. He sells his business and his property and his land. He sells everything in his house. He sells the clothes in his closet, all of his personal effects, every memento from his past. He sells all of his furniture. Everything under the roof of his house is sold and then the house itself is sold. He says to himself, if this is what it takes to get that pearl, then this is what I'll do. I want you to see that man. I want you to see him sat there on the ground with nothing but a pearl in the palm of his hand. Can you see him? He owns nothing else but that pearl and he's fully satisfied. His heart is content. He's filled with peace. His joy overflows. He doesn't need anything else. He doesn't want anything else. That one pearl is enough for him. I want to show you two pictures from this text. And in the first picture, the merchant man is you and me. The man represents people. And just like that merchant, people everywhere are searching for precious pearls. They are looking for that pearl of great price that will make their life complete. And people are searching everywhere for that pearl. Popularity is a pearl. And people think that if they can just get their hands on popularity, then everything will be all right. If we just look a certain way and dress a certain way and speak and act a certain way, then we too can be popular and we'll have it made. And then of course there's that hyper popularity of fame and celebrity and everybody wants that pearl and alongside it comes the other pearl of money and riches and wealth and we've got all of these so-called celebrities running around here now who are famous for nothing. They have no skills, no talents, they've made no positive contribution to society whatsoever and yet they are adored by millions and we've got an entire generation today that is lost in this daydream where they think that the only thing that's important and the key to all happiness is to be famous and to pose for pictures on the red carpet and to sign autographs and to have millions of followers on Twitter and Instagram. But you just scratch beneath the surface and you'll see how shallow that life is, how vacuous and empty those celebrity souls are, and how even when they ascend the mount of stardom and reach the summit of fame and fortune, they find that there is absolutely nothing there, only the echoing emptiness of loneliness and vanity. But there is a pearl of infinite value and worth. It is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the pearl of great price. He's the pearl of great price because only in him is there peace. Every heart craves for that inner stillness that can withstand anything life throws at you, that cannot be shaken no matter what happens. A soul that sings with joy because it's complete. And I'm not talking about some superficial happiness, but deep down in the soul there is a well that never runs dry. Hunger is satisfied, thirst is quenched. There's a radiant light of love that never fades, never changes, never vanishes away. Jesus is that peace. Matthew 11:28. Come to me, he says, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, all of you who are burdened and weary, come to me and I will give you rest. For with me, he says, you shall find rest for your souls. Money can't buy it. Fame can't reach it. Education can't teach it. But there are millions around the world today who would testify right now that they found it freely in Jesus Christ the moment they put their faith in him. Jesus is the pearl of great price, not only because in him there is peace in this world, but also in him there is hope in the next. 
You think that this life is all there is? You're wrong. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment, and after that, eternity. You think that sitting in those seats, you're not going anywhere, but you're wrong. You're moving forward right now, second by second, minute by minute, you are getting ever closer to that moment when you will step out of this world forever and beyond the horizon of this life. There is a never ending existence and the only hope that you have when you cross the threshold of forever is Jesus Christ. He's the celestial ladder between heaven and earth. He is the stairway to heaven. John 14, 6, he said, no man can come to the Father except through me. The scripture says that God has given to us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who has the son has life, but he that does not have the son does not have life. Christ is the pearl of great price because while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He bore our sins in his own body on the cross. He shed his blood for the ungodly. Jesus died so that one day, and for you it might be this day, you would see the God that sits upon a throne of mercy and grace, where rebels become righteous, where sinners become saints, where strangers become sons, and where all who come to him in the name of Jesus are accepted. And if you too will come today, you too can find forgiveness and peace and the hope of everlasting life. Jesus is the pearl of great price. And just like that merchant man, you should be prepared to let go of everything else in order to possess him. You should be prepared to let go of pride, lose your reputation, renounce any claim on this world and the things that it has to offer. You must be ready to forsake comfort and ease. Be prepared to lose all interest in seeking the adulation of the crowd and the praises of men. You must deny yourself and count the true cost of following Jesus. Jesus. And if you can't sit like that merchant man, having nothing in your hand but that pearl, you should think very carefully this morning about why it is you call yourselves Christians and why it is you call yourselves disciples of Jesus. But there is another picture that I want you to see. The merchant is Jesus Christ of Nazareth and the pearl of great price is you. You are a pearl of inestimable value in the sight of God Almighty. And I'm telling you, there are lots of preachers out there who would chastise me for saying that. They would rebuke me for saying that God considers you a priceless pearl, because what they would want me to do rather is bludgeon you about the head, about how vile you are, how sinful you are, how wicked you are, and keep on doing that until I've beaten you into submission. And make no mistake about it, I believe that in himself, man is not good. He is sinful. Apart from God, the human heart is deceitful above all things. It is desperately wicked. But none of this affects our value to God. Your value isn't determined by you. It's not determined by your actions and your words and your deeds. We don't make ourselves valuable, but God has chosen to place value upon us. He has set his love upon us and he esteems us a great treasure. To him, you are a pearl of great price. And for you, Jesus, the merchant man came giving up everything. He laid aside his majesty and the glory that he had with the Father before the creation of the world. And for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, laying down his very life that he might take up that priceless pearl in his hands and rejoice over it. Can you still see him? The merchant and his pearl, I tell you, it's Jesus. And the treasure in his palm is you. You are all that he wants. Others may call you worthless, but to him you are priceless. Others may cast you out, they may reject you, but he will pick you up and never let you go. And if you will come to him this morning, he will take you into his omnipotent hand, the hands that formed the galaxies, the hands that painted the sky with stars, hands that were long ago nailed to a tree because he loves you so. And in his hand, you will remain forever a precious, priceless prize of Jesus, who is the lover of your soul. He found one pearl that was worth more than everything he had in life. And he sold it all 
and bought the pearl. Now, I want you to think for a moment. There are many different ways to interpret this, but I want you to think of yourself tonight as that one pearl, uniquely beautiful and valuable pearl. You know that pearls are the result of suffering. It's out of the suffering of an oyster that a pearl comes forth. So maybe you've been through suffering and you've begun to question whether God really loves you. And you've begun to think, well, I'm really not worth much. I'm not important to God. There are other people who are important, but I'm not. I want to tell you that is not true. You are important to God. So important to God that he gave his son Jesus to die on the cross for you. You. Specifically you. Jesus sold all that he had. He left all the riches and glory of heaven, became a carpenter's son, became a traveling preacher. And when he died on the cross, he literally owned nothing. He was buried in a borrowed robe in a borrowed tomb. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul says, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Jesus sold all that he had. He gave up everything for you. I know he purchased the treasure in the field. That's God's people as a company. But he also purchased the one pearl of great price, which is you. You. You in your weakness, your failures, your lack of understanding, your frustrations, your loneliness, your fear. Jesus died for you. I really believe, I've convinced myself of this, that if no one else would ever have got saved, Jesus would have died for me. If there had never been anybody else, thank God there are millions of others. But I like to make his love individual. I like to make it personal. I like to say, for me he died. For me he gave up his throne. For me he laid down his life. For me he suffered on the cross. And he was buried. And then for me he rose. He ascended. He's at the Father's right hand. Now if you have a problem with self-worth, if you have a low sense of self-esteem, you don't really feel that you matter very much to God or maybe to people. You may be lonely. You may be wondering how you ever got here. I want to tell you God brought you here. Yes, amen. You have an appointment with God tonight. And I want you to think of yourself this way. I think of that merchant having bought the pearl. He's holding it in the palm of his hand. And he's looking down at it. And he's saying, you're beautiful. You're the most beautiful I ever saw. You cost me everything I had, but you were worth it. You are so beautiful. Now I want you to think that you, individually, are that pearl. You yourself, you're there in the palm of the Lord's hand. And he's looking down at you and saying, you're so beautiful. You cost me all I had. But I love you. I'm glad I died for you. The devil did everything he could prevent me from getting here tonight. But he's a defeated enemy. Now, I want you to think of yourself. Just now, for a little while, shut everything else out. And see yourself as that one pearl in the palm of the hand of Jesus. And remember the palm bears the scars of his sufferings. And I want you to think, Jesus is speaking to you. And he's saying, you're beautiful. 
You cost me all I had, but you're worth it. I'm glad I gave my life for you. Can you perhaps say these words with that picture in your mind? Say these words after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died for me. I thank you that you died for me. That you gave yourself. That you gave yourself. On the cross. On the cross. A death of agony and shame. To purchase me. To purchase me. And Lord, I belong to you. I'm yours forever. I know you will never leave me. You will never forsake me. I'm graven on the palm of your hand. I'm beautiful in your eyes. More beautiful than all the, the worlds you created. Because you set your love on me. Because you love me, Lord. I love you. Receive my love tonight. I just give myself afresh to you tonight. I thank you, I'm not unwanted. I'm not unworthy. I'm not a cast off. I'm not rejected. I'm accepted in the beloved, in you, Lord Jesus. I'm accepted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again and again for that wonderful love which you poured out on the cross. Thank you, Lord.